time I believe and trust God that you are going to enjoy uh, what we are discussing and we've been talking about knowledge of God because knowledge is very important but let us pray as we start oh, father in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord I thank you for the viewer that has come on board I pray that you are going to bless them oh God all them that have come as we share from your word as we look at who you are Lord I pray that you shall convince us that there's so much you can do around us and for us, even as we embrace you uh, with understanding and knowledge. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in, you, in, in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. We are now dealing with, uh, we are on program number 147, 147. So there are many programs that have gone before this one. And... Uh, 
uh, for the so many uh, previous uh, uh, programs, we have been talking about knowledge of God. You, as a Christian, you need to know God in a way of a relationship. So we are not teaching like Bible school. Uh, we are trying to emphasize a relationship, knowledge, in, uh, with the relationship in mind. And we have been talking about uh, the compassions of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, uh, the compassions of God. Also, uh, in the last program, we were talking about God as a healer, to, that you know God as a healer. But today, I want us to, to talk about God as a potter, the one who makes the clay, the one who makes the pot. We want to see him from that angle. Because uh, in our work with him, we need change, we need transformation. But before we go into those details, I want to bring the bigger, bigger picture that we are talking about working together. Amos 3.3, 3, can two work together unless they are agreed? So we are talking about how do we agree with God in this relationship of marriage, because the church is a bride of Christ, it's a marriage. How do we work with God? And also... Uh, we are making reference to Isaiah 11, verse, verse 9, part of it says, The earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. That knowledge of the Lord, uh, the earth should be full of that knowledge. So that's what we are discussing. So we are looking at different aspects of God so that we know God from this side and this side and this side and this side. We know the totality of who God is. Without really going into fine details, we are looking at everything from a relationship uh, uh, with him. Uh, a, a place of our hearts being uh, clear that God loves this or this. That's what we are, we, are, we, are, we are doing. So in the book of Jeremiah chapter 18, uh, verse 4 says, and the vessel that he made of clay was mad in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good for the potter to make it. So uh, if, you, if you read from Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1, from verse 1, you see God calling Jeremiah to go to the potter's house, and there I'll speak my word. Visual aid, extremely important. Visual aid is extremely important. So we see, we see God desiring to convince Jeremiah of what the potter does with the clay and the pot. So it's a question of convincing. It's, it's a question of Jeremiah getting to understand what God is talking about. So when Jeremiah went there, he observed. He observed that uh, the potter would uh, do the work and make the clay until there is a very, very nice vessel. Let, let, let's assume it's a pot. In the eyes of Jeremiah, this is a perfect pot. But then the, the, the potter would mar it and mess it up and crush it and make it clay so that the pot could not even have a name. It's just clay. And so God was telling Jeremiah, can't I do the same? Can't I do the same to the children of Israel? And he's still saying the same. God looks for vessels. God wants to make you, to make you into the vessel of his mind, his desire. And because we are all different, Maybe you are a minister and you need gifts. You need discernment, you need wisdom, you, you need um, knowledge, understanding, plus, plus, because of what God, how, uh, what God is going to use you for. So he makes different vessels. So he's like a potter. I want to bring up another uh, testimony here. It's it's a practical thing that somebody did in terms of making, in terms of molding and shaping, and in terms of processing the, the, the product. Let's call, say it's a product. One lady 
was concerned about uh, the scripture, I think it's Malachi 3, maybe from verse 3, where God, the word of God says that he, God, would sit as a, as a reviner of silver and gold. And uh, he would uh, uh, change, transform the sons of Levi so that they may minister with righteousness and all that. So uh, one, one, one lady uh, became interested to know, and how does the silversmith work on the silver when he's trying to purify because God was talking about purifying the sons of, sons of Levi so that they may offer sacrifices to God in righteousness. So she went to the silversmith and she went to observe how the silversmith does the work. And while she was there, she would observe that the silversmith would hold with some tongs the silver, the piece of silver, putting it into the hottest spot of the fire. And his eyes would be on that piece of silver the whole length. He would not turn on the side. So the, the lady wanted to know, the sister wanted to know, why are you looking at it all the time? The, the silversmith smiled and said, if I turn away, I turn my eyes away from it, and then it, is, it becomes purified and continues for a little longer, it will be damaged. So, the lady wanted to know, and how do you know when the silver is pure, is purified? Again, he smiled and laughed and said, when I see myself in it. So when are you purified? For God to use you as a port, as a vessel. When our Lord Jesus Christ sees himself in you. That's not easy. It's not about people. It's not about other people. It's you and your God. God, by, the, by his spirit, wants the opportunity to be allowed the opportunity to purify you, to make you the vessel that he wants. And he will make different vessels for different purposes. And I may not know what sort of vessel God wants to make you into. I can almost sense what God wants to use me for. I'm yet to confirm. I see signals, <coughs> signs, but those are just signs. It is God who knows. It is God who knows what he wants to make out of you. And so it is very, very important to understand God from that side of things, that he's a porter. And if you look at the porter versus the clay, the clay has no say over what the, po the porter is doing. The clay cannot talk back, asking the porter, why are you making me like that? The porter has full authority. The porter has the vision. The porter has the knowledge. The porter has the ability to do what he's supposed to do. That's why, we are, that's why we are talking about potter, the potter. Again, we see what I've just mentioned, the, 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 the clay responding. In Romans chapter 9, verse 21, the word says, Does not the potter have the power over the clay from the same lamp to make one vessel for honor and another for dishonor? <laughs> the, the potter has the authority and the power to make the type of porter, uh, the, 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 type, the type of vessel that he desires. And, and going with this scripture, I think uh, the writer was uh, looking at uh, the position of Pharaoh. Pharaoh is God who raised Pharaoh. It's God who hardened the heart of Pharaoh to resist the children of, of Israel from going where they were going into the promised land. You are saying, ah, God, I don't understand you. I don't understand you. Your people were so, were so messed up, they were so oppressed. It's you who raised Pharaoh, it's you who had dead his heart. Yeah. Reason? He wanted to be glorified. He had to raise Pharaoh. He had to had, and the scripture is very clear, he hardened his heart so that 
when Pharaoh hardened his heart, and it's God who did it, then God was able to strike, to hit. Reason? So that he can be glorified. We have not gone into that yet. Glorifying. God loves glory. We are, we are vessels. You are a vessel. I don't want to say that the Lord will raise you up as Pharaoh to resist God so that he can strike and hit for his glory. I don't want to say that, but I want us to look at it from the positive side. God wants to use you. God wants to use me. God wants you to completely yield humility. And we are still going to go to have a program on humility. We are going to have a program uh, discussing quite a number of other aspects that may touch on this one. So in this program, we are saying God is a potter. He presents himself as a potter. Can't I do this? A supporter. In Isaiah chapter 64, verse, <clears throat> verse 8, the word of God says, But now, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay, and you our potter. And all we, the work of your hand. Lord, you are our father. You are, we are clay. You are our potter. We are the work of your hand. So Isaiah who was speaking that, and we may not go into the entire uh, uh, issue, what was happening there, but we are looking at God as the potter, and you are the clay. Once you are walking with him, and you know that he wants that position as the potter, and you are the clay, it's up to you to yield. That, that's why humility, which we are going to cover in another uh, program, humility is crucial before God. Humility, humility, humility everywhere. Reason? If there is no humility, you are going to resist God. You are telling God, don't touch me that way. This is not the way I was brought, I was brought up. And the problem here is that you know God uses people. And we, we gave the reason uh, in the other program that uh, man is, is, is the one who has dominion here. <clears throat> is the legal person here. Man. So God wanting to do something here, he looks for a man. If God wants to do something, he'll look for a man. And because of that, if you start saying, no, 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 I'm not ready. No, no, don't touch me that way because that is not the way I was raised up. My mother never used to do those things to me. No, 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 no. That is not the, the, the religion that I know. Uh, it's not our family re religion or church. And God wants to use you. He's not talking about church, different uh, congregations, churches. He's not talking about religion. He's talking about you. You as an individual. When you bring too many reasons why you cannot do this or the other, why you cannot yield and so on and so on, God has a problem. This is what has delayed revival. Because we justify things, we have certain histories, we have traditions. God uses children. God uses simple people. God uses messengers. Ah, messengers. Why? Because messengers, I love messengers. Messengers are very obedient. You know messengers will deliver the letter to, your, uh, to, 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 to the boss to suck him. <laughs> the boss is being sucked. It's assume you are in a company or even in a government department. You have your messenger and he has to pick the letter to suck you. You know the messenger will bring that letter to you. It's a messenger. And he was, you, he was under you, or he's still under you, as your messenger. But for now, he's delivering your letter to you, having picked it from another office. He's called to pick a letter to deliver to the boss. You are the boss. It's your messenger who delivered the letter to suck you. And the messenger is very faithful. He will just deliver the letter. So God is looking for messengers. 
He's not looking for bosses. He's not looking for complicated people. If God is going to do anything big, he's, lo- he's, he's going to use children, he's going to use messengers, people that are extremely simple. People who don't know how to ask questions. But people who have learned obedience. Normal children, good children, they know obedience. We are not talking about children who are wild. Normal, good, family children, no obedience. Messengers, no obedience. Sometimes a messenger is, has to go to the office at 6 to open, and he will leave there at 7 because he's the one closing the office. How he gets there, how he gets home at night, nobody asks the question. So we are saying the same thing. God is a porter. He wants to make us, he wants to make us messengers. He wants to make us children. Even Jesus kept quoting little children. That the kingdom of God is for such that will be like this child. The biggest, the greatest in the kingdom of God is the one who is going to be changed to be like this child. On the outside, no. Your beard will not go, just go. Your gray hair will not go. But inside, you are responding like a child. You don't have questions when God is speaking. So, so God wants to make us. God wants to make you. God, God wants to transform you, to change you, because we have developed hardness. We have developed questions to ask every time. Every issue, we have a question to ask. I'm not saying we should never get clarity. We should never uh, give our opinion. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying when the Holy Spirit is speaking, you still have to ask too many questions which culminate to resistance. And God knows our hearts. God knows your heart. God knows my heart. When you are resisting that question you're asking and you are resisting, it doesn't matter how polite it is. It will not matter. You know you can make it very, very polite. But what you are saying is you are resisting. Because we, are, we know how to be courteous. We have learned. We we'll get very, very courteous with people so that uh, you don't want to cause offense. It's good not to cause offense, but we have gone too far. When the Spirit is speaking, he doesn't want you to hear other voices. He's, he's jealous. He wants you to hear only his voice. I, I wonder whether in a port, in a vessel which is made by hand, two people are making it simultaneously. I'm not sure of that. I'm not used to vessels, but I'm imagining. Those vessels, that the port, they would put a, a port in something going round like this. One port, and it's being made. So you are using your hand to shape it. Using your hand to shape it. I'm not sure that that would be done by two people simultaneously. I'm not sure of that. So God is like that. He doesn't want an input when he's shaping the, the pot. Where does the input come, uh, come from? My church, my denomination, my family. They are important. We need to respect everybody and everything that God has given us. But when it is you, as an individual, where is the priority? Where is the priority? So, and these are inner things. These are things on the inside. They're not so much on the outside. We respect our people. We respect everything, the, the hierarchy in our systems. We should do that. But from what I'm saying, God is going to use people that people will be wondering, where did that one come from? We have, ne- we have never heard about uh, that person. Oh, it's the same thing. John the Baptist, he just appeared from nowhere. Elijah, he appeared from nowhere. We have no history of Elijah. He just appeared once like that. And the things he's saying, he's talking about national issues, great issues, that there will be no rain. For years, there will be no rain. And then he, he disappears. God is going to use people like that. People that are coming from nowhere. But God has been preparing them with time. And these people have sold themselves to God. 
God is not going to use a vessel that is resistant. No, I don't think so. Even if I were him, I would not use someone who is resisting. And even people in the armed forces, when you are going to war, they respect the commanders. Oh, oh, they obey the commanders. Because if there is no obedience, there is no way you are going to win the war. So it's what the commander says. So we have a commander. He's the potter to make us, shape us. And I've said it in another program, I took a cadet course and uh, I picked a number of things for my own life and so on and so on. So when I was picked uh, to be trained, I never joined the armed forces, but I was trained. So when I was picked to be trained, I went with a bit a fair amount of pride because I was, I was able to have a very, very nice suit. We were still in school doing elevos. I had a very nice suit. Uh, now that I've been chosen, I wanted to present myself in a very smart way. There's nothing wrong with being smart. But you know what? For what I've been called for, this type of pride showing off, showing that you are better than others, that was the first thing that was, was, was attacked. I was stripped off my suit. I was given uniform, and all, we all became the same. Nobody looked different from any other. And then something else was dealt with. We would be given instructions. You are told, march there. Before you go halfway, you are called, and you are insulted. Where are you going? Come back. So it doesn't make sense because you are given instructions to go a certain distance. Before you get there, then you are commanded back and you are being insulted because who told you to go there? And you are actually told. What, 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 what were they doing? They were removing, striping uh, pride from us. God would not do it in that manner, but God would not want that resistance that comes from pride. That resistance that comes from I know. That knowledge may not be what God is saying, that I know. I have done this, I have mastered this, I have, uh, for so many years I've been doing this, I know. No, God, our God, is a God of new things. And he lo is looking for people who appreciate that he's a God of new things. So if he's coming with something you have never seen before, then yield, then be able to submit yourself. I see the, I've seen, I have the scripture quoted, Malachi 3.3, 3, he will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the, uh, the sons of Levi and purge, uh, purge them as gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Malachi 3.3. 3. That's what God does. To refine you. To refine the sons of Levi so that they can offer the sacrifices in righteousness before God. So that's what God is seeking to do around your life. And I believe he will just do that if you yield. So I want to pray with you that you shall see him as a potter. He sh we shall see him as a refiner of silver and gold to make you, to make us. And God, Jesus, is working on the bride. And the bride is you and I. So that he may present the bride to himself, pure, without wrinkle, without spot, spotless, without anything that is foreign. And he's the one that is doing it. The bride should not have wrinkles, too old, or spot, uh, uh, having garment that is uh, as spots. So I want to pray with you that the Lord will make you that bride. All of us that are saved, we are part of the bride of Jesus Christ. Father, we want to thank you. Lord, I thank you. For the viewer, I thank you for all those that are, have been on board. They have come to hear your word. I pray that your word shall cut. Your word shall transform us, every individual. Your word shall be a blessing to all of us. And now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen.